Wish, Chapter 22 That Sunday we piled into Gus's car and headed down the mountain to church. Jackie had French braided my hair like she used to back in Rayleigh, and Bertha made a fuss over it. I just love Charlie's hair like that, she said. Jackie, you should get a job in a beauty parlor. You have real talent. Jackie thwacked her forehead and said she couldn't believe she'd ever thought, never thought of that before. I might look into that when I get home, she said. So then Bertha told us a story about her friend Denise, who flunked out of beauty school. Just flunked right out after three weeks, and it ended up marrying some rich guy. But not two months later, she ran off to Atlanta with that rich guy's brother. Jackie loved Bertha's stories and always laughed or said, No way, or I can't believe that, while me and Gus just sat in silence pretending to be interested. After church, Jackie snatched cookies off the food table in the fellowship hall and then went to hang out with the teenagers in the parking lot like she'd known them for her whole life. How had Jackie and I turned out so different? I was sure she never worried one little bit whether or not anybody liked her, but then, of course, everybody did like her. So what was there to worry about? That afternoon, the Odoms came over to Gus and Bertha's for dinner. Bertha always made a big deal out of Sunday dinner, but with the Odoms coming, it was a regular feast. Jackie and I helped her set up some card tables out in the yard. We pushed them together and then put a sheet over them for a tablecloth, and Jackie set out mason jars filled with wildflowers. Looks like the Queen of England is coming for dinner, Gus said. Bertha bustled around the kitchen, and before long, the house was filled with all kinds of good smells, and the countertops were covered with bowls of black-eyed peas and turnip greens, squash casseroles and sliced tomatoes, fried okra and succotash, biscuits and gravy, brownies, and peach cobbler. Then she took a big roast chicken out of the oven and said, There, now if I can keep the cats out of here, we're all set. Of course, Wishbone sat by the kitchen door with his nose twitching in the air and his tail wagging a mile a minute. Not yet, boy, I told him. Maybe later. Then we heard Burl's truck on the gravel driveway, and me and Wishbone ran out to greet the Odoms. All those redhead boys spilled out of the back of the truck and the front y yard that was usually so quiet except for the birds on the fence post or the sputter of the sprinkler in the garden turned into a flurry of commotion. Dwight and Lenny running and punching and climbing on the fence. Cotton chasing after the cats. Mrs. Odom hurrying inside to help Bertha with the food. Mr. Odom and Gus out in the lawn chairs talking about the NASCAR race over in Charlotte last week. And Howard and me tossing a tennis ball for Wishbone to catch. Then Jackie came outside looking like Miss America, and I thought Burl was going to faint right there in the red dirt. Everybody else had changed out of their church clothes except Jackie. When she came strutting across the yard in her white sundress and bare feet, I don't think I'd ever seen her look so pretty. I still had that French braid in my hair, so maybe I looked pretty too, even in my shorts and ratty t-shirt. I hope so. But I knew I could never look as pretty as Jackie. Before long, Bertha told everybody to go inside and load up their plates, and those boys liked to bust the door down racing to the kitchen. Then we sat at the card tables in the yard and held hands while Mr. Odom said the blessing. Gus and Bertha weren't the blessing type, but I guess they did it to be nice to their company. Mr. Odom sure had a lot of stuff to be thankful for, everything from this beautiful day to those turnip greens. Then he said, and thank you for sending these two fine young ladies to shine their light on us here in Colby. I knew I was supposed to have my eyes closed, but I took a peek, and there was Jackie grinning and winking at me. As soon as we all said aloud, Amen, everyone drove into their food, dove into their food like there was no tomorrow. Mrs. Odom and Bertha kept running back into the kitchen to bring out more tomatoes or succotash, while Jackie poured sweet tea and gush chewed cats away. Wishbone sat by Cotton, hoping he'd drop a chicken leg. By the time Bertha brought out dessert, everybody was rubbing their stomachs and saying how they couldn't possibly eat another bite. Except, well, maybe just a little of the peach cobble. Cotton leaned across the table to grab a brownie and said, Hey, look, the wishbone. Sure enough, right there on the greasy platter was the chicken wishbone. Of course, my dog, Wishbone, 
heard his name, and ran over to Cotton, probably thinking he was about to get something good to eat. Who wants to pull the wishbone with me, Cotton said. Dwight jumped up. Me, he said. No, I hollered, pushing Dwight out of the way. It has to be me. Cotton held the bone behind his back when Dwight tried to grab it. I called it first, Charlie, Dwight said. I stomped my foot. No, it's mine. I could feel anger flooding over me, and it was all I could do to keep myself from shoving Dwight. Then Howard hurried over and whispered, Pineapple, in my ear, just as I was stomping my foot again. Jackie shook my shoulder and snapped, Good grief, Charlie, quit making such a fuss over a silly old bone. But Howard piped up and said, Come on, Dwight, let Charlie pull the wishbone. Uh-oh. Was Howard going to tell everybody about me making a wish every day? I hadn't told him not to tell anybody, and now I bet he was, and everybody was going to think I was crazy. But he didn't. He told Dwight he'd give him some of his Bible bucks if he'd let me pull the wishbone and cotton, with cotton. How many? Dwight asked. Three. Make it five. Okay. So Dwight ran off to grab another brownie, and Cotton held the wishbone out to me. We each took a side and closed our eyes. I made a wish, and then I pulled. Snap. That bone broke in two, and guess what? I got the big side. The side that's supposed to make your wish come true. Dang it, Cotton said, tossing his piece of bone onto the table. Before I had a chance to thank Howard for helping me like that, Mr. Odom announced that it was time for them to go, and they piled back in Burl's truck. I knew I should have joined Jackie and helped Bertha clean up the kitchen, but instead I sat out in the yard with my arm around Wishbone and watched that truck bounce up the gravel driveway, loaded with all those good-hearted Odoms. When they turned onto the road, I hollered, Thank you! I figured Howard probably wouldn't hear me, but then I saw him give me a thumbs up before the truck disappeared from sight.